Behold my Warframe racing tier list. So I'd like to say. Look, in this video I'm going to show you this tier list and then you're going to see footage of every single Warframe in the game that possesses anything even remotely resembling speed. I'll explain and demonstrate every single ranking in detail. I'm Zandy and I'll be your host today, but first, we need to lay down the law! So listen up! First of all, yes, you heard me right, this is a racing tier list. We race against each other on my stream every Wednesday, you should check it out, it's a fun time. There are prizes. This is not for normal gameplay, this is for racing. Second, all tier lists are subjective, no matter how we try to avoid making them that way. I've used every frame in normal gameplay, and I've used everyone above F tier in a real race before, but I am just some guy. It's okay and expected that you will disagree with some of these things. Third, it is not okay to be an asshole because we have different opinions. Just say what you want to say like a normal person and explain your reasoning. Think about what I said, respond, and post your comment. It's not upsetting when someone has a different opinion from yours. I'm not an idiot because I think something different, and neither are you. Okay? Okay. Now that we've all graduated kindergarten, let's go on to first grade. Here's the tier list. Now, once again, there are some disclaimers. A lot of people think of speed as literally just the base run speed of each Warframe, but you don't need a tier list for that. You can just look that up on the wiki. I'm going to be referring to a Warframe's base run speed as, quote, natural run speed throughout this video, and I'm going to tell you right now that in actual races, natural run speed alone can't get you past C tier. Just a few more things and then we'll get into each individual frame. So there are going to be a lot of comments about arcane helmets and maybe prime variants, and I'm going to tell you right now that in practice, it doesn't really matter. There are also some parkour arcane helmets, and those don't get you past C tier either. Very few people have these things anyway, and they very rarely make much of a difference, so I think they're unnecessarily complicated and I've left them out. I'm aware that they exist, they just don't really matter that much. Use them if you got them. At the start of each race, we use an energy pad as a 3-2-1 go signal, so you can count on having relatively high starting energy, and you're free to spam your own pads if you want more. Warframe abilities are obviously allowed and they make a big difference, but this is a competitive event. You can't count on help from anyone but yourself. Some speed abilities can affect, quote, allies, though, and that's worth considering. You don't want to help the competition. Anyway, if you'd like to see our trailers on this subject, those are in the description. Let's start breaking these frames down. There are timestamps for everything in the description as well, if you're dying to know why someone ranks a certain rank. Let's begin from the bottom up. So, in F tier, we have Nidus, Inaros, Saren, Frost, Hero, Mag, Oberon, and Wukong. These frames all have lower than average natural speed, and also have no movement abilities whatsoever that increase their travel speed, so they're an F tier. They have other abilities which are very good, but those do not increase their speed, so they do not matter. If you use these frames in a race, speed and parkour mods are all you've got. Good luck with that. Moving on. In D tier, we have a lot of frames, and they're split into two little categories. Frames that simply have higher than average natural speed, and frames that have some kind of movement ability, but a janky one. So let's start with the jankiest of those, and that is Vauban. But Vauban doesn't have any movement abilities, you say. Well, that's where you're wrong, dear Tenno. Uh, Vauban has these bounces, so his trampoline grenades do actually make you go faster if you move through them. Like that, that's a considerable amount of lift I just got there. If you bullet jump through these or simply walk through them, if they land sideways, then you get a somewhat significant like Mario Kart-esque boost effect, which is pretty cool. Gives you a lot of rather persistent forward momentum, which is interesting. So this is the fair we're talking about in D tier. Like this is barely even actually useful, but it is technically better than having nothing. And the other thing you can do with these is just spam them at the beginning of a race. And like, maybe these will mess someone up, you know? Like, oh, actually that's kind of a lot of boost. Let's go, ooh, baby, that's pretty far. So you can also set up these kind of massive booster like slingshot things and then boost through them at the beginning. But you're never gonna be able to do that like while you're racing, unless you are an absolute god of like leading your shots slash grenade throws. And these grenade throws, like, don't go, like, I can I can bullet jump ahead of this. So like, if you're actually racing, you're not gonna be able to throw those in front of you and then use them because they don't move fast enough. But um, see, if you hit them the wrong way, they do slow you down. So you can like sabotage people at the beginning of the race. You're gonna have to move around them too, but I did. Look, nobody's trying to tell you that this isn't cool. 
Like, that's cool, but it's not next in the list of janky movement abilities. We have Atlas. Now, Atlas has his one, his punches, which do make you, like, dash forward to a single target. I don't really think it matters that much, but, like, if we just spawn in a bunch of dudes... I have, like, medium power range right now, so you can, like, be racing, racing, whatever, and then just sort of like, oh, I'm going a bit faster, but then I stopped. And a bit faster. And it's barely faster. So, yeah, Atlas is pretty boring. Um, obviously, it's not good to be able to go faster only in the direction that there are enemies. We do use capture missions for this, and capturing the target does give you a point, but it doesn't really help you do that. It could very situationally make you go a little faster, but uh, go figure. Again, it is better than nothing, but not good. And then we have Chroma. So Chroma is fast because when he takes his pelt off with his four, which I'm gonna need a lot of energy for, you do move faster. You get a 20% movement increase that is not affected by power strength. Now, you can get going all right with that. Let's put some speed mods on and I'll show you what that caps. So here we have assembled ye old run speed mods and I threw in a bullet jump mod just for kicks. So this is not gonna be enough because this ability drains way too much energy. But as you can see, we can go like kind of fast. Like this, eh, eh. It's really not that fast. Like this, I, if this looks fast to you, Please watch the rest of this video because this is not fast. But again, the problem with this, beyond it like just not being fast, it's literally just not fast, is that it takes an insane amount of energy. So as you saw, we had full energy, that's 225, and it ran out during that demonstration. Like in a whole race, a couple of minutes, you can't really get energy back very reliably during the race. So it's pretty unlikely that this is going to cut the mustard. Like, I'm already out just from that little sentence I used to explain talking. I got a little more, still running out. You could fill the rest of the build with power efficiency and power duration, but eh. So that's it for the Warframes in D tier that are faster because they have like a janky speed ability. Uh, now onto the Warframes that are just passively faster. So Limbo deserves quick special notice here. A lot of people don't know that Limbo's thing where he got faster while in the Rift got nerfed. That's gone. He doesn't have that anymore. So Limbo is not fast in any special way. He just has higher than average run speed. He's not fast. A lot of people have said too that like this dash thing he does is fast, but we actually tested it side by side and it is actually the exact same physically as a roll. It just looks like it's different. It feels like it's faster, I agree, but it isn't actually faster. Limbo just has faster than average run speed by a little bit. Along with Banshee, Trinity, Nyx, Ember, Mesa, and Necros. All of these Warframes, once again, have slightly faster than average natural movement speed, but they have no other ability that makes them fast or is relevant to racing in any other way. Thus, they are in D tier. Moving on to C tier, I believe this is the beginning of what I would call the actually useful Warframes for racing, and we start out with a really strange one, which is Ivara. Now, Ivara will be a very good example of what the C tier Warframes are, but just to briefly summarize, these are Warframes that are fast for passive reasons or whatever, but also usually have some kind of gimmick that makes them more fast than usual, but it's either not that much faster than everybody else, or it is very rare that the ability actually helps you. So a lot of these are going to be pretty weird. Dvara is the weirdest of them. So here's the build we're going to be using. This is not complete, obviously. I don't even have space for all the mods I would want on this. But um, this is a lot of speed. It's a lot of run speed. And then we have Infiltrate, which makes you move faster while you're in Prowl and gives you movement speed. And that movement speed is affected by power strength, so we have a bunch of power strength. And pretty low efficiency, but don't worry about that. In fact, let's just briefly fix that so as not to be unfair. But it doesn't really matter. So what this build does is it makes you go very, very fast on dash wires. So if you fire a dash wire, let's say we fire one over there, let's say. Now it's going to connect with the ground near me, if there is ground near me, in which case it won't work, and the ground over there where I shoot. And then if I go into Prowl, I need some energy. Now normally, oh, this is not Prowl. Normally when you're in Prowl, if you sprint, you leave Prowl, right? And it, sprinting is what makes you fast because of all those mods, yeah? So wh what's up? It's not, it's not fast. You can't just like creep along and be, be fast in Prowl. Well, for some reason, you can sprint when you're on dash wires. So if I jump in this dash wire, this is already pretty quick, but I'm not sprinting right now. Are you ready? Oh, that's very fast. Okay, so, and you, ooh, baby. So you maintain your momentum when you get off the dash wire as well, leading to a hilarious railgun-like tactic where, like, if you, you can just ooh, go very far, right? So, um, yeah, it, uh, the thing about this, listen, 
that's that's all well and good. This is very nice. It's very cute. But in the middle of a race, are you really telling me just like flip around a corner, not get hit by that bounce, and shoot an arrow perfectly in the direction that you want to go, and then flawlessly jump on it, hit prowl, and like go to space. Like you can you can honestly do that. If you can honestly do that, then you should play Avara. <laughs> but in the middle of a race, I feel like this is going to be so difficult to set up. It's it's quite difficult to do this in an actual race. And the other big stipulation is even if you are that good, you have to be able to see your end destination. So if there are doors, which there are lots of in Warframe missions, you won't be able to like go through the door. You're going to get to the door and then you can catapult yourself through, but if it's not straight on the other side, you don't really want to do that. Anyway, you get it. There are a lot of uh, a lot of butts with this, but man, do you go fast when you jump off that zip line. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, it's cool, but probably not that great. Um, Ivara's natural run speed is actually like a bit higher than average as well. So you will do relatively well if you happen to poach a speed buff off someone. We're gonna start talking about that now that these warframes are actually competitive remotely for racing. But it is pretty, pretty iffy. But again, very situational speed. If you get a big straight, you will go very fast if you can set this up properly, like competently. Would probably take some practice. Next, we have Equinox. Now, Equinox has naturally fast run speed, sure. But when you switch into day form, her transforming ability, when you switch into day form, you will get a speed buff. And that speed buff does scale with power strength, but it starts at a measly 15%. It does scale with power strength. I'm going to show you this, which has a lot of duration, a lot of strength, like nothing efficiency, and then some movement speed. And if you shift into day form, you do get... So I'm going to go night form. Oh, I was. Okay. So now you get a very long speed buff. As you can see, it lasts for like 47 seconds with the build I have. And like, this is like fast... But I don't know, like when you see other Warframes that are like really fast, I feel like you're not going to be impressed by this. But it is relatively consistent because it doesn't cost very much energy over time, like over the course of the race. You can probably do this, and then like once it runs out, you have to go night form, which will get rid of it. And then if you go day form again, you will get it again. So I mean, a minute and a half of being fast like this for that amount of energy is like not that bad, right? And I, you're not that slow, like when you go into night form. Like, you're not that much slower. Like, it's not that noticeable. So, it's okay. She's okay. This is, like, Volt Light. Like, if you were, like, practicing Volt, or, like... Anyway, she's not that fast. But it, she has something. So, there you go. Fairly fast. I would say of the Warframes that are viable to rely on just running across the ground, Equinox is the weakest of them. Valkyr. Now, this one is a bit bizarre. So, Valkyr has her rip line, right? You can, like, Spider-Man between things... And that gets you moving okay, but not it's not that fast. So if you're going up, like, that's not that good, because that was basically just a bullet jump. Let me go back here and bullet jump. See, the bullet jump is better, and it doesn't cost energy, and you don't need to target. So <laughs> it's not good for going up, and it's not good for moving laterally, but it is good for moving down. Did you see what just happened? So when you go down, Valkyr's Ripline not only accelerates you along with gravity, it also allows you to sort of slide as you make your entry. So you can make quite a nice little clean swoop down into an area. And the other thing that this does is allows you to modify your trajectory when you're in midair. So like I can be sort of like going over there and then grapple to the ground and make a very smooth transition like that, you see? Instead of like having some kind of awkward like air strafey thing happen where I slide like that and then go like this, I can instead make a cleaner transition to the ground by grappling to it, like that. And that makes you a bit faster. It also lets you maneuver into doorways that are like in midair pretty nicely. This is actually kind of the opposite of some of the ones we've been showing where it might look good on paper, but in practice it's like blah. In practice, this might seem like kind of lame, but on paper, it, if you find the right situations for it, it should be very helpful to be able to like sort of stall yourself like that. So that's what Valkyr has. She also doesn't take hard landings. No matter how far up you go, you don't get a hard landing. It's so like, if I don't slide here, see no hard landing. But you can just crouch to eliminate that. That's not really a, a bonus of any kind. So yeah, that's that's what that is. Valkyr is good at, like, correcting movement in midair. So in really complicated environments where it's, like, hard to run or even really bullet jump, Valkyr's value can go up. But otherwise, she's not really all that fast. 
There is also that one augment for her hysteria, but we tested that and it's not. Don't, don't try that. Ash. Maybe one of the ones you expected to be in a higher tier, but Ash is in C tier. Ash has quite fast natural run speed, and he also has his teleport. He has a teleport. He's in he's in C tier. He has a teleport. Yes, because you teleport behind people. <laughs> so if you can constantly spam teleporting behind someone, you can't ever win. You'll just always be losing, but closer to the person who's gonna win. <laughs> so unless you can somehow overtake them with your speed or something, which you can't because other warframes are faster, you won't be able to actually win using Ash's teleport. It'll just let you catch up. Now, mind you, if you're a god at maneuvering and stuff, and you just mess up and fall behind, then Ash could help you catch up. If you have really good aim, you could just spam teleport to someone. But if you're a god at movement, you probably just use someone who's actually faster, and then you'll win. So go figure. Ash is not, not that great. He's fast, and he's good at correcting his mistakes by teleporting to the people that did not make a mistake but only if he can see them, only if you have God to your aim, and even then, he doesn't reward that skill with a victory. He just gets you to second. So, he's in C tier. Rounding out C tier, we have Titania and Mirage, and both Titania and Mirage have passives that increase their bullet jump velocity, which means you can bullet jump real good around the map. And this is very helpful because you do bullet jump a lot during races, you need that to maneuver vertically quickly so it is important to have like a fast bullet jump like that's that's pretty high and if you grab your telos boltes this has also has a passive that increases your bullet jumps so you can go very very high which is rather nice and very helpful but not enough to win over warframes that are so fast on straight areas or just good at maneuvering around tight corners and stuff it's a big boon, you'll use this advantage a lot, but it's not a huge advantage, especially because everyone can use Telos Boltes. If you have, say, a 20%-ish better bullet jump from Mod, a 20%-ish better bullet jump from Telos Boltes, and a 20%-ish better bullet jump from the passives, these are not the actual numbers, it's just for an explanation, then your bullet jump is actually not that much better than just the normal person with a bullet jump mod and Telos Boltes. <laughs> Um, if it was that you had like twice as good bullet jumps, then that would be crazy, obviously, but they're not really that much. This isn't useful too often, but I have experienced this Titania that sometimes if you like fall off the map or make a mistake, turning into your Razor Wing form can get you like back faster, but going into your Razor Wing is not a way to like be faster. It won't actually like make you race effectively. It's just a way to like save yourself if in very rare situations. B tier! Now we are getting to some very competitive stuff. This includes only Excalibur, Rhino, and Octavia. It's kind of hard to be great because that implies that you are better than just having a gimmick, but it's not good all the time, which is a bit odd. So we only have Excalibur, Rhino, and Octavia because they do have very powerful speed abilities. Usually this is the opposite of C tier, whereas in C tier there are many conditions to using your speed, with Excalibur, Rhino, and Octavia, there's just like one problem with their speed ability. And then in A tier, there are just no problem, you know, or they're insane or whatever. So Excalibur has his dash. That's pretty obvious. Excalibur can just slash dash and go real far, really far, super far. So as you can see, like this already completely destroys anyone who's running on the ground. Like forget about it. Like you've already lost the race just by using slash dash. You can just beat anyone who's running on the ground. You don't, this is silly. You don't need to do that. You can just slash dash all over the friggin' place and go ridiculously fast. And just like with Valkyr, when Excalibur hits the ground, he slides very nicely too. You don't get a hard landing, you just proceed as normal, which is very, very valuable. Cause you will be doing that a lot to like get into a doorway. You see like, oh, I have to go over there. And then you like snipe it like that. Very, very effective aerial movement tool. Excalibur can use his dash in all directions too, which is very, very important. But he has the one drawback that you can lock onto enemies. I know that seems like a nitpick, but if you're in the middle of a race running through tons of enemies, if you lock onto enemies instead of zooming past them, that's gonna slow you down a lot. That's the same thing as Atlas's dash, and that was terrible. So that's what it is. Excalibur has no other relevant assets except his dash, and his dash is fantastic and not very expensive. It's like really low energy costs too, but unfortunately, you might lock on to nearby enemies and that's a bit of a killjoy. He's still really good though, and I love that there's such a competitive racing frame that is like the most popular starter. Rhino is pretty similar. Rhino also has his dash, which will make him go rather fast. You can spam his dash over and over again, 
and you can get going real quick. But there are some differences. This is quite hard to demonstrate in the simulacrum because there's not that much space, but <laughs> first of all, Rhino's Dash gets cheaper if you use it consecutive times. So if you're using this on a straight, you can just hammer it. And as you can see, it's now only costing one energy per cast. So you basically have infinite energy while racing with this. Um, second of all, it's not as fast. As you can see, it's it's not it's not a slash dash, you know? It's it's slower. You can spam it real hardcore, but it it is slower. But, third, it doesn't lock on to enemies, so you can just charge through a pile of enemies. If the map has a really low ceiling, Rhino's Dash is often better because you can just dash past people's bodies, <laughs> which is rather valuable. Um, and then the last thing is a drawback. Rhino's problem is that he, uh, his dash isn't that, you know, long range, sure, but also that he cannot move vertically. When you dash, you always move laterally, which can be a bit of a problem. You can't, like, snipe doorways like Excalibur could. See, if we're flying over here and we want to go over there, you just move through, like, through the air, kind of, instead of moving, like, in the exact direction you want to go in. And that's really what would be valuable about these dashes in a lot of situations, especially the ability to do them in midair. So, he loses some points for that. Rhino can be pretty naturally fast, though. I would say if any Warframes, like, Arcane Helmet makes a difference, Rhino's does give him a lot of speed, and he's not that slow naturally, weirdly. You wouldn't think he should be fast, but he kind of is. So, he's okay. I would say he's the worst in B tier. He In practice, the dash is not that strong, but it can be pretty good. So, finally, we have Octavia. Now, you're going to have to forgive me. I'm quite bad at Octavia. So, this rating, like some others, are not based on how good I am at the frame. It, the ratings aren't based on, like, how good people are. It's meant to be, like, how theoretically good it would be if you could do the thing consistently. So the reason Octavia is good is because she has a very large speed boost. If you jump on her notes, then you can get a speed boost, and it's quite large. It is the third largest in the game, right behind two Warframes that are in A tier. But the thing about Octavia's speed boost is because you have to jump on your notes and everybody has other players' Octavia music muted, it's almost impossible for other players to get your speed boost, and the other two Warframes that have abilities faster than Octavia's it's easier for other players to get that speed. So Octavia has like the best selfish speed boost and it's really good. So again, I'm quite bad with Octavia. So you're gonna have to forgive the jump cutting here. I can't like show you me getting the speed buff cause I can't do it. But theoretically bullet jumping does count as a jump. So if you bullet jump perfectly in time with your music you won't have to stop racing at reasonable speed bullet jumping to get your speed buff and then you go really really fast for a reasonable amount of time and if you're good at refreshing it you'll be able to refresh it before that one cast ends which leads to a very nice duration as well so as you can see i have triggered vivace speed boost and it is pretty fast i don't even have the absolute maximum power strength or the absolute maximum run speed mods and this is getting going rather quick yeah so if you can maintain that speed buff and if you have a build that you know sort of has enough space to make that work you could go very fast and then you know you have your bullet jump mod and whatever but octavia brings up the first of the warframes that have sort of like a bloating problem speed is not normally a huge factor in warframe so builds have not been designed to have enough room for a bunch of speed mods so as you can see here i have an octavia on zero forma and these are the mods i have and i have no more space so let's say that i wanted to make this build as good as it possibly could get we need more run speed, so we need to put on, at the very least, rush is the, the biggest priority, and speed drift would be nice. Some, some more speed. So let's say we put rush in the Exilus slot, that's all well and good, so we need like two forma to do that. One or two forma to do that. And then we're going to need, well, probably some more duration, that buff didn't last that long, so maybe we want narrow-minded, two more forma to do that. So you still have a lot of mods that you would like to use in this build that you just don't have room for, yeah? Like, you can swap out Power Drift for more sprint speed or more duration if you like. That That's probably good. We're now up to, like, 5 Forma, I think, <laughs> if I'm counting correctly. And everything isn't maximized. So you can say, okay, well, if you maximize Octavia's power strength, then it's really, really fast. But you actually don't have space to do that. You know, the duration will suffer your sprint speed will suffer. If you just go full power strength and full sprint speed, there's no room in the build for duration or efficiency, and it's barely even worth getting the speed buff. So Octavia is not in B tier because she's not really fast. She's in B tier because builds currently do not have enough space to make her as good as she could be. So just an interesting thing to think about. A lot of the problems with 
other Warframes, even if they did scale with speed, would be bloating as well. Oh, and that was B tier. Now we are on to the meta. The A tier Warframes, five in total. Naja, the third Lotus Prince, is our first Warframe in A tier. Now, Naja here is fast in a way that no other Warframe really is, and that is with ground friction reduction and slide mods. So by just equipping these three mods, that is Cunning Drift, Maglev, and Streamlined Form, you will have the maximum reduced friction and the maximum increased slide, and you will be able to slide really, really quick. Now the great thing about Naja is he is really fast, but he also like doesn't need energy or anything. You can just tap, and like see, this is faster than every Warframe that was running on the ground up until now, except maybe Octavia. So he's, re he's really fast, and you can do it in a lot of interesting scenarios. Now, he doesn't have to move completely straight. You see, I can sort of, well, fall off the side there, but, you know, go around corners a bit. But it does take a lot of practice to control properly. I love Naja, if you can't tell, <laughs> and um, I play him all the time, so I'm kind of used to it. But even then, like, I make mistakes, and it's a lot of momentum, yeah. Um, you can actually slide attack to, like, sort of stall your momentum, see how it, like, after the second one, you just kind of like stop, and then you can move forward in a different direction. So you can potentially manipulate that, which is all well and good, and you still got bullet jumps for when you're in the air, but go figure. A lot of people have also mentioned Naja's uh, teleport thing, but this ring, as you just saw, barely moves faster than you move by just like skating around, so that's not really useful as an actual movement tool. It's cool that he has it, and sometimes if there's like a really precise place you have to go, you can solve that by like throwing your halo at it and then teleporting to it, sure, but mm, overall it's a little bit underwhelming as a movement skill. He's really good for his slides. Now, they also do have an interesting interaction with him having good movement speed, and Firewalker gives you good movement speed, but the build is, again, a little bit bloated. I guess another small perk that Naja has is that you can cast this Warding Halo and sort of use that as a battering ram to make sure you don't get stuck on any enemy units, because it does damage when they touch it, usually killing them. That's nice. Anyway, Naja's real fast, and our first A-tier Warframe for his incredible consistency once you've practiced with him. Next in A-tier we have Zephyr. So Zephyr is fast because she has a speed increase on an augment. Jetstream does scale with power strength, so you could get moving real quick. Now as you can see here, we have another problem with bloating. This build is a bit low on efficiency, has plenty of duration, a bit low on strength, and we don't even have all the sprint speed mods, just to overkill it a little bit and humor you all a little. Let's just add sprint boost here. And you'll see we do go really fast, but it's not as fast as we could go if we could use every relevant mod, but we can't use every relevant mod. So I'll cast this, and we have her floaty passive. And as you can see, you move pretty fast. Like, this is quite quick running. Like, And because of her floaty passive, it can be a little weird to control, but that same floaty passive can sometimes get you in a doorway very nicely. You don't have to lose your momentum. You can just jump and sort of sail forward gently into a doorway like that. See there I gained speed by not having to go up the ramp or anything, I just coasted in. Which is rather nice, it's rather relaxing too. Zephyr is pretty fast, but one thing she's not actually that good at is using her fly thing to go fast. Now th these aren't the right mods for Zephyr's flight abilities, but even with the right mods we actually found that they're not faster than just running with turbulence on. So you should just run across the ground instead. You will lose to Rhino or Excalibur or any other dasher, but her one is still an all right movement ability for like sailing into a door if you're in the wrong situation, a bit similar to Valkyr's thing with her rip line. So Zephyr is pretty good. Appropriately next we have Volt. Now Volt is fast for the very same reason. He has a speed buff. Volt's is the fastest of every Warframe in the game and Volt's natural run speed is fine as well, but the thing about Volt is that it's quite hard not to give his buff to other people around you. So I'm going to move to my racing build, which is right here. As you can see, we have a lot of strength, not maximized strength, but a lot of strength, and the high, uh, the most sprint speed I could get on here. <laughs> you can min-max a little bit, maybe take off speed drift for more strength, but Volt's speed doesn't have very long duration either, so you really can't let the efficiency get too low. This, is, again, is a problem with bloating. All of these builds could be really good, but you don't have enough space for every relevant mod. You will see that with just those mods, and like that's pretty low power strength overall, he's really fast. Like Once we really get going, like he's quite, quite fast. And th again, this is like only two-thirds about of like the full speed you can go. I have full sprint speed, but only like half the power strength you can have. So 
He's real quick. Just to show you how fast that can be, I've jacked up the power strength and totally ruined the quality of life on this build. So you can see just how fast we can go if we were to throw caution to the wind and just try to go fast. And it's really fast, right? Like that's quite fast. It's it's very difficult to control in the simulacrum. It's really, really fast, yeah? So he's very fast. The problem is, again, you can give that buff to allies and you don't want to give that buff to allies because all of that min-maxing you did, all of that adding power strength and whatever, that's being given to allies who may have faster base movement speed. The reason I've said natural movement speed this whole time is because if you get buffed by a Volt, you're probably faster. If you use all the same sprint speed mods that you have room for because you're not the Volt cramming in power strength, and you're some other Warframe that has naturally higher sprint speed, if you get a Volt speed buff, you win because you're going to beat the Volt. You're the fastest running Warframe possible. If you were to buff a Zephyr, you're completely screwed because they're insanely fast now. <laughs> so the problem with Volt is not that he is not crazy fast and rather consistent. It's that if you give your speed buff to other people, and it's quite hard not to do that, unlike some other Warframes, you're kind of screwed because Volt doesn't have the fastest sprint speed and he doesn't have room for all of the sprint speed mods other people could run. You may very well be able to win races by just picking, like, a naturally fast Warframe from D tier, and then standing near a Volt with all of your sprint speed mods on and bullet jump mods and whatever, and then, like, hoping you get a speed buff, you you stand a decent chance, actually. Having shown the, j like, not jankiest possible thing that you can do in racing, I'm now going to show you possibly the jankiest thing, and that is Hydroid. Yes, Hydroid is A tier. Hydroid is A tier. I'm quite serious. The reason Hydroid is A tier is not because of his natural speed. He's barely, barely in D tier with his natural speed. It's his wave. Hydroid's wave sends you so far <laughs> if you stack power duration, not range. Other dash abilities, you get range. This is duration. So with this build, this is the build I'm going to show you, you can move very very fast in the following way. All you gotta do is line up your shot and wave and cross the entire map in a moment. Just a moment. That's further and faster than Excalibur's dash and it can go even further than that. It's very very good for just like blind flying through a door and you like hope that it's straight on the other side. <laughs> um, Hydroid is basically the fastest on straights. If you have a straight area ahead of you which many of the race courses do, Hydroid is basically going to win. He's just so fast when you wave. It's... Anyway, there's not that much to say about Hydroid as a car build. He doesn't really have much else to optimize. You could add in some sprint speed mods maybe and hope for a Loki buff or whatever. And you need good parkour for the areas where you cannot use your wave since it has such a massive aftercast. But you can break using your puddles. So I'm going to fly over there and then stop. Which, like, can work. Like, that, that slows you down a bit, but if you're going to fly into a wall, with good skill, you can stop yourself from going way too far by using your puddle. Like so. Oh, I so Note that this is really similar to what Ivara is good at and ranked C for. The reason Hydroid is ranked so much higher is because you don't need to stop at a door. All you have to do is point in a direction that you hope is straight, and if it is straight, you're going to fly right through it. Whereas Ivara has to be concerned about whether she can see the destination, and then, you know, she can catapult herself a little further at the end with that speed. But Hydroid is able to achieve similar speeds, sometimes even faster, and he doesn't have to know where he's going to end up, he can just throw himself there. So imagine Ivara's ability to go fast, but without having to set it up at all. You can just look in a direction and go. Oh, after a very long journey, we've come to the end of A tier, and Loki. Loki is actually similar to the discussion we were just having about Hydroid versus Ivara's like, speed abilities, because Loki also has an ability that makes you go fast if you can see your destination. However, his is a bit more extreme. Loki is not fast because of switch teleport, because it's very, very difficult to actually target another player. If you do, you can swap places with them, but that's Loki's only way to get an edge over people like Volt or Zephyr, except by stealing their speed buff. So once you swap with someone, I mean, you'll be ahead of them, but then they'll catch up to you because you're slower. Loki is a naturally fast runner, the fastest in the game, in fact. But again, that's not enough. This level of speed is not really all that relevant compared to, you know, Volt and etc. And the only reason it is relevant is because if you steal a Volt speed buff, 
you are indeed the fastest Warframe in the game. The fastest possible speed would be Loki, who stole a Volt buff. And the only way that you're going to be able to get ahead of people besides that is by stealing their location in the race with your Switch Teleport. So Loki is kind of like a speed thief, <laughs> but he also has a gimmick of his own. A powerful but very situational gimmick, and that is Switch Teleport on his own clone. So you can do this, and yeah, that's faster than Hydroid, that's faster than Avara, but you have to be able to aim not once but twice in the right location, and you have to be able to see your destination, and you do not get any benefit like Avara's extra speed when she throws herself into a door. With Ivara, you can look at a door and say, okay, I'm going to go there fast. And then when you jump off the zip line, you'll continue to go fast through the door, you know, a little bit. Hydroid doesn't need to do that at all. He can just look at the door and say, I hope it's straight on the other side and throw himself at it. Loki can't even do that. He can only go to the door and then he stops. However, this teleport has a ridiculous range. Let's just like... Like, that's, that's pretty far away. Like, that's rather far away. Like, let's try over there. Oh! Well, that's, hmm, that's a bit far. That's rather, rather far. A little, a little far. There aren't that many locations in Warframe maps that are actually that large, so you actually can't even take control of Loki's full potential at the moment. If there is a distance that you can see ahead of you, you can basically always instantaneously travel there as long as you have good enough aim and reaction time. Just like so. However, again, there are not really distances that big in the game very often. If they're there, Loki wins, and if they're not, he probably doesn't. But he's good at stealing Volt Speed buffs, and sometimes you'll be right on the heels of the winner, and you'll be able to switch teleport to them and steal the game. However, it's, it's rather difficult. And even with his ability to teleport, it's not instantaneous, because you have to cast the two abilities, and then you stop at the exit. Loki is really, really good, but he's rather hard to use, and... That's that. He's really powerful, but he still gets beat out by Warframes that have faster ways to move passively, unless he's in his special situations where he can be tricky and do something fancy. At last, we've come to S tier, and S tier is populated by a single citizen, and that is Nova. Nova is banned, as you can see on the tier list, and that is because she is simply too fast. Even without actually using her teleports as teleports, even if she only uses her natural run speed, sprint speed mods, the augment for her teleports that makes her go faster when she comes out of them, and some power strength, she is already almost the fastest Warframe in the game. And with her teleports, she goes to being unbeatable. It's almost impossible to actually even watch a Nova that is really good racing, because they just teleport from moment to moment instantaneously. You don't need to see your target, you don't need to aim properly, you just point in the direction you want to go and go, and you don't even really have to respect collision very much. Nova's wormholes can conditionally ignore collision and sometimes even go through walls if you know the right placing, and they also mess up allies because they can't maintain their speed abilities as they're running through the map and there's like a place they have to go and then they jump into it and they're like, I don't even know where I'm going to go. It slows down the reaction time, which the Nova does not have to deal with. So it not only mucks up the competition, without even you trying to, this is not even mentioning like making bad portals, getting ahead a little bit, and then just making a portal that goes like off the map to slow people down. <laughs> uh, Nova is too strong, so she's been removed. Sorry, Nova. Um, it would be cool to have like all Nova events if there are people that are really good at Nova, like speedrunners, but she's too strong, it disrupts normal gameplay, and it's very difficult to watch, like see what's going on so she's been banned. That's not even getting into the fact that you can use multiple teleports in a row instantaneously, which is something no other Warframe with this big a movement ability can do. Anyway, it's been a long journey, folks, but we've finally reached the end of the tier list. I hope you enjoyed it very much, and I hope it inspired you to join us racing on Twitch. So check that out in the description, along with my Twitter, Discord, and Patreon, if you are so inclined. And I hope you all joined us very much. If you had a good time, subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow for another video. And if you didn't, well, you made my channel much more successful by adding tons of watch time without enjoying a video. Cheers for that, and I'll see you all next time.